Transparency is really imperative and we need to get better at it in the connected TV and premium streaming space. The reality is it's not really a technical limitation, but it's something that we just need to be better at and enable for our advertisers on a day to day perspective. As we think about transparency and why the need for it, you know, of course, as we think about share shifting from linear television into connected TV, we know every spot that airs down to the second and in what program in linear TV. And if we're looking to put those two next to each other, we wanna make sure that we can seamlessly move back and forth to maximize our reach against our audiences. But we wanna know where we had the opportunity to air. A lot of that is to ensure that our do not air lists are being appropriately uh, implemented for our buys. But just additionally, it's gonna allow us to be smarter with our buys moving forward, knowing what programs are our audiences really tuning into to allow us to make better, smarter buying decisions for future campaigns, whether that's also in national linear or continuing into the connected TV space. So transparency is core and it's really important for, for our advertisers just to know where we had the opportunity to run and where we did run. And when you talk to your advertisers, what are some of the big challenges uh, that they face and opportunities that you see for them in connected TV and TV more broadly? Yeah, I mean, connected TV being digital in nature just allows us to be really targeted with our buys, really allowing us to, to reach our audiences and now at scale in a premium lean-in video environment. So that's a massive opportunity. But then conversely, the same thing also comes with challenges. When we think about connected TV, just like linear television, where data technology is only getting enhancing, we're able to use data to find our audiences, but it is at the household level versus at the individual device. So it's not actually at a, a consumer level, but the head of household. So as long as we can really make sure we're really clear and upfront with that, we can ensure that we're reaching our audiences in a great premium big screen environment in that living room. Well, that brings me to my next point. I, I sense there's a lot of confusion among some people about what linear addressable TV is uh, compared with CTV. And I was hoping maybe you could just discuss some of the differences and what's happening and what some of the opportunities for brands are in that space. Yeah, I mean, this industry, we love our, our acronyms and our different name, naming conventions and addressable television can mean so many different things, whether connected TV by its nature is on the television glass and is addressable because it's one-to-one -one and you can really use your audiences and your data at the core. So it's inherently an addressable medium. But then we have our legacy addressable TV that's done through the MVPD or set-top box providers, thinking like DirecTV or Comcast or Dish, for example. That's another world where we're able to use our audiences and tap into the local breaks and be able to really use our audience there and still have that one-to-one -one experience. But I think what's really exciting and now at the forefront is this new national addressable TV where we're able to really utilize the, the OEMs and being able to serve on a one-to-one -one basis, a targeted addressable ad in national linear time by dynamically inserting over the glass. Roku just made this announcement with their dynamic linear ad insertion product. And there's also been Legacy Project or now renamed to Enact where they're able to, to really target consumers on the national on the national 14 minutes, but against your audiences and putting in the right ad in the right household against that, that Vizio Inkscape footprint. So as we look at the future of advertising and addressable, it's really about pairing your audiences and finding the right combination of connected TV to really reach your audiences, as well as national linear television, whether it's MVPD set-top box or utilizing the national stream and overlaying through linear TV glass. So finally, Brad, I just wanted to hear more about what you think about the future of CTV advertising. And if you have any bold predictions or any items that are on your wish list for the next few months or year. 
Yeah, I think we're really excited about the future of connected TV and advertising really looks like. I think being more, getting more learnings about how we can use interactive ads and shoppable ads in a big screen environment, I think is going to be really at the core. How do we lean into more dynamic ad insertion, um, even product insertion into the CTV space? So as we look at the future of connected TV, of course, it's going to be driven by the consumers who continue to lean in and, and, and go and watch their great premium content on connected TV. But at the end of the day, I think we're most excited about the different ad innovation that's really coming down the pipeline to create new unique experiences for the consumers in this medium.